Okay, you guys, so I trust everybody's doing really well. My name's Steven Scullion. If you're new to this channel, I've been documenting my training, trying to qualify for the Paris Olympics. It would be my second Olympics. And I guess what I try to do on this channel is not just document the training from a perspective of look how fast I am, look how great I am, look how amazingly fast this session was. I try to do it in a way that I can help educate people to learn from some of the stuff that I'm doing to help you be better at running, to help you be better at sport, to help you perhaps handle the ups and downs of sport life a little bit better than perhaps you already do. If you already handle all those things perfectly, well then maybe this isn't the video for you. But given that we all go through ups and downs and given that we all could probably listen to little bits of advice every now and again, then you know it might be a great video. So I'm currently in Flagstaff, Arizona. I'm putting in an altitude camp to help build a little bit of a base layer of fitness, you could say, or a little bit of a foundation before the marathon plan will begin. That's kind of how this works. Let's zoom in a little bit. So today what I'm doing is I'm, I'm in a park called Buffalo Park. It's, it's a little bit undulating, but not super undulating. And the reason I come to this park is because the, the loop itself is a controlled environment is what you could say. That's if I was going to give you some advice, that's what you should be looking for. You should be looking for a loop or, or a, you know, a course that allows you to put in good work but you're not distracted by cars, by people, and by dogs, by cyclists. And so you can just get into a nice flow and a nice rhythm. And that's super important for a day like today, for a training session like today, which is your, your zone two, fat burning, steady run. It's essentially the cement, I would say, of what puts together a really good result on race day you're making the most of some of the days in the week that you're not out there doing hills or intervals or a long run, but you're trying to make sure that most of the days of your week and, and most of the days of your preparation before your next big race counts. Why that is so important, essentially you're going to be racing against a field full of athletes. Some will have made of a 100-day build-up some of those guys will have trained 20 to 25 days out of the 100 in terms of I actually moved my physiology forward. Others, like myself, might put in 70 of those days from a perspective of let's move the physiology forward. One of the biggest sort of mistakes I would say that most athletes are making is you're working too hard on the hills and the intervals and the track stuff and the tempos which means you're a little bit too tired going into some of the medium or basic days, you could say. And so because of that, you're compensating and you're knackered. So the thought of doing a steady run or the thought of doing maybe a zone two run, it almost becomes, go, oh, I'm knackered. I couldn't do that. I couldn't handle that. But when you start doing your intervals at the right efforts, when you start doing your threshold or your tempo work at the right speed and you take your ego out of the equation, suddenly you wake up on a medium or, or what used to be a recovery day for you and you're thinking to yourself, I'm, I'm pretty good to go. So you take yourself to a loop like I am here at Buffalo Park. You need to do about 45 minutes in this zone to get the benefit of helping your body get better at moving energy and fat as fuel around the body. So I, I listened a lot to a guy called Inigo San Milan and he's big into zone two fat burning in the cycling world. So if you wanna look up some of those videos, they're absolutely fantastic, couldn't recommend them highly enough. I got told a long time ago, Paula Radcliffe told my friend Andrew Butchart that almost on a daily basis as a runner, you should be sweating, you should be working. I, I'm not a physiologist, I'm not a sports scientist. All I can tell you is that all the research I've done, everything I've read, and when I've actually put those steady days into practice, it's created some of the best fitness and the best race results I've, I've ever had. 
And so today's run is a good run. If I'm being totally honest, I probably pushed it a little bit too quick. That's because at altitude, it's going to be a lot more difficult to predict where that steady zone two might be. I probably, I race a marathon at about 170 heart rate. Today I'm operating around sort of 155 to 160 towards the middle and the end of the run. I probably should have kept it at probably 150 and at a maximum 155. The better trained you get, the better you get at this kind of training, you can actually push it a bit further and you're still in that fat oxidation area. The, the difficulty or the danger would be, am I pushing this too fast? Am I doing this too hard? And is it going to not complement the training that I'm doing for the rest of the week? Is it going to eat away at it a little bit? Is it going to make me tired before I do an element of the training week that perhaps carried a bit more substance or was more important before your next goal race? That's why you need to keep a lid on this stuff. My recommendation, even though myself personally, I can do two or three runs a week in this sort of zone two fat burning area. When I was in Fontremeau training for Dublin Marathon recently, I ran 211.52. You're probably looking at three or four of the runs every week was in this area, around that 145 heart rate up to sort of 155 and even sometimes 160 on some of the uphills. At first, you're gonna think, this sucks, this is really hard, I don't like this. And then eventually it just kind of becomes the norm. At first it's gonna make you a little bit tired and then eventually you're gonna realize, holy shit, this is just making me better and better, I'm getting fitter and fitter, my, my sessions are getting better and better and this stuff works. So I can't recommend it highly enough. I use this controlled loop so that I can just get into a flow, get into a rhythm, not worry too much about the heart rate and the pace and try to just feel it out. Then of course there still has to be days of the week that you just run easy and it's all about recovery. Slow them right down so that they're you know at a very slow pace. Don't worry about pace, don't worry about distance, just get some time in. And so today you're looking at it being 50 to 60 minute run, around about six minute per mile pace. And so if I was gonna race a marathon at altitude, I'd probably have to run at 520 to 530. And so as you can see, it's probably 30 to 40 seconds per mile, slower than marathon pace or marathon effort, but it's a good solid effort. I include some hills, some climbs, some rough terrain to build a bit of strength in the legs and just get the body ready for that next big race. Essentially, you're gonna start making every day of the week count and not just the session days, which trust me when I say this, it'll prepare you the best you've ever been prepared for a race. If you like this content, like, subscribe, do all those lovely things. You can check out the running school. There's a lot more tips. This YouTube channel, that running school is built for guys that just, and girls, apologies, that you know what I meant. Guys and girls who just want to be better at running. They want to enjoy their running more. They want to make sure that the time that you're, you're putting in counts. I realize that I've been lucky to be exposed to world-class athletes, world-class coaches. A lot of this stuff that I'm doing, I do it as, autopilot because I've picked up that knowledge. I would love you guys to have more knowledge so that when you're out there training, you know exactly what to do to hit that next race in the best way possible. So that when it's over, you're not beating yourself up about why it didn't go well. You know exactly why, because you now have the knowledge to be better. So you can check out the running school if you like. Hope you like today's video. Start to include some steady days into your training. Brilliant for the psychology, brilliant for the fitness, and all round will prepare you much better for your next big race. These days are the cement to what builds a big race. So take care, get involved, get some steady runs done, and I hope your next race is brilliant.